Teza is probably one of the most popular characters in Genshin Impact. I mean, take a look at his recent rerun banner sales and you can probably see. And all that isn't without good reason. He's super fun to play, he does insanely well in the Spiral Abyss, he provides great utility for exploration, and he's really hot. I mean, he's aesthetically well designed. But he's also one of the characters that I've seen the most misconceptions about. He's a very misunderstood boy, I guess. And because of how popular he is, I really want to make this video to just kind of talk about and address the three biggest misconceptions I've seen about him. And yeah, I'm not gonna make the intro too long, let's just get started. Oh, but a quick disclaimer though, a lot of this is gonna be related to how Kaza is built, and anything I say is definitely not meant to shame anyone, to tell anyone they're wrong, or to try and force anyone to build a certain way. I still think the most important part of this game is to build and play however you like. And the only thing I'm trying to do is to provide more information. So don't be toxic, and let's actually get started. You probably heard something like this before. Build the M on Kaza if you want to maximize team damage, and build crit if you want to maximize his own personal damage. But this isn't entirely true. While a crit build can do more damage against a single target, an EM build will almost always out damage a crit build if there's more than one enemy. And this is because of how Swirl works. Swirl is a really strong elemental reaction that cannot crit and only scales off of EM. The reason that it can do so much damage has to do with how an enemy can get swirled twice. Let's say there are two enemies, A and B. When you hit your swirl on A, the AoE of your swirl will go on to hit B, and the same thing will happen again where when you hit your swirl on B, the AoE will hit A. So essentially, you're doing four hits of swirl from one ability. Now unfortunately, it caps out at two, so you can't hit like nine times when you're swirling three enemies and so on, but that's still a lot of damage. Damage that a crit build can't really capitalize on. To show you guys a comparison, here I have my Kaza on a pretty highly invested crit build with 70% crit rate and 200% crit damage against a build where I try to maximize EM. As you guys can see, the two builds did similar damage despite the EM build having only a 4 star weapon and the crit build having a 5 star weapon and good artifacts. But that's not the only reason why building EM can do a lot more damage. The damage from Swirl can actually ignore enemy defense, which is very cool in Pog, whereas the Anemo damage buffed from building crit can't. Furthermore, Swirls can actually trigger chain reactions that scale really well with EM. Let's say for example we have an enemy that's affected by Electro. If Kaza swirls Pyro onto this Electro-affected enemy, he will trigger Overload, and the Overload damage will also scale off of Kazaha's EM. So yeah, contrary to popular belief, building EM on Kazaha will actually also allow him to do more personal damage than building crit. Now once again, this isn't to shame anyone or to force anyone to build a certain way. Building crit can do more damage in a single target situation, and if you just like building crit or if you think it's fun, you should go for it. I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. I think the most important part of this game is to build and play what you like. But also, I have a lot of viewers who are building crit on Kaza because they want to treat him right and stuff, to which I would personally disagree. I think he would prefer EM because it lets him do the most overall damage, you know what I mean? I don't know, you can argue about that with me in the comments. The next thing we're going to be talking about is the idea that leveling normal attacks on Kaza is useless. Now this one isn't true because when you use your Kaza's ability, the damage from the plunging portion actually scales with his normal attack talent. You know, like this part right here that does a lot of damage and looks really cool? Yeah, that scales with normal attacks. In fact, the damage increase you get from leveling your normal attack is actually roughly the same as leveling your ability. So if you're leveling your talents on Kaza, you should definitely consider leveling your normal attacks as well. Moving on, we have the last misconception that I want to talk about. And that's the idea that the Iron Sting is Kazaha's best 4-star weapon. Now you might be wondering why that's not the case, cause I just spend a lot of time talking about how building EM does a lot of damage. And the Iron Sting is an EM weapon, so it should be really good. But the reason is actually pretty simple. A very significant amount of Kazaha's damage comes from his elemental burst. So aside from EM, you also want enough energy recharge to be able to use his burst on cooldown. And the ER requirements to be able to do that can be kinda hard to hit. For reference, here's the ER that you need to be able to spam his burst on cooldown for his popular teams. Credits to Zajef77 for the list, very Pog content creator, I like him a lot. 
But yeah, as you guys can see, some of these ER requirements are really high. And so if you don't have this amount of ER, it's actually more damage for you to run an ER weapon like the Favonius Sword or the Sacrificial Sword. With the Favonius Sword being better because it has the added benefit of generating particles for your teammates. And don't worry about the crit rate for proccing Fav Sword. Because Kaza does so many hits in his combos, you can actually pretty reliably proc it with a very low 20 to 30% crit rate. And even if you don't proc it just normal attack a few times, you'll usually get it. Now you might also be wondering, oh, if ER is the only thing I need, what if I used an ER Sands and still use the Iron Stake? That still wouldn't be as good as an ER weapon with an EM Sans because as you guys can see here, an ER weapon with EM Sans has overall more stats than an Iron Sting with an ER Sans. So in general, Kaza's 4 star weapon ranking should have the Favonia Sword being the best, then Sack Sword, then Iron Sting. The Iron Sting still is a very decent weapon though, and can still be the best weapon if you can optimize artifact substats to have enough ER. But yeah, that's about it. That's all I wanted to talk about. And if you guys are interested in a more in-depth explanation, I did link all the content that I referenced down in the description. I think it's super good stuff and I definitely recommend you check them out if you're interested. I'm also interested in knowing your thoughts on the topic, so please do comment down below what you guys think. And if you guys liked the video or thought it was helpful, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps a lot.